Hey folks, Chris here from lazyfa.com. I wanted to take a second today to talk about a couple brand new features that I've just released on the site. So since the early days of this project, one thing that people have constantly asked me about is how do I use LazyFA in order to predict a fair value for a stock price? How do I know how much a stock is actually worth? I have all this information on LazyFA and I have all these charts and all these statistics and all this information, but it doesn't tell me whether I should buy or hold or sell. And until recently, the only thing that existed on the site really that would show you that is this little traffic light here on the dashboard. And even though this doesn't look like much, it's actually a pretty advanced feature, which takes into consideration a number of items such as how much volume the stock trades, its float, its earnings, and a few other things, but it's not terribly accurate and it's a little bit buggy. So we needed a better way in order to accurately predict stock prices. So that's the first feature that I've just released. And if you're a pro subscriber, you can access that now by going to the menu and clicking on valuation modeling. Now I'm gonna quickly walk through what each of these cells is for, just to give you an understanding of how this works and how to use it to your advantage. In the top left corner, you've got the current fair value estimate, and that considers the price today, the present value of the business, as well as the shares outstanding, and then it calculates the fair value, the upside or downside, and whether the result is overvalued, undervalued, or fairly priced. So you might be asking yourself, how does it do this? Well, this model uses a simple discounted cash flow analysis, which we actually talked about in our live stream just last night. So if you are not familiar with how to do discounted cash flow, take a look at that live stream. We went through this entire process using the exact same formula that's in use here on the site and went into a lot of detail about how everything is calculated. So take a look at that. But in the meantime, that's how this model works. This entire top right section, the WAC estimate, is used in order to calculate the weighted average cost of capital, which is part of the discounted cash flow formula. So we pre-populate as much data as we can in order to automate as much of the calculation as possible. But all of these items, for example, interest expense, total debt, the EBIT tax expense, all of these items are adjustable. So if there is either an inaccuracy in the data or you want to adjust your estimate, it's quite simple to make these changes. And you can see that the fair value and the upside and downside updates in real time. So this is a lot easier and a lot faster than using an Excel spreadsheet because the data is already pre-populated for you. The ultimate goal here of the upper right corner is to calculate the estimated weighted average cost of capital after adjusting for taxes, the risk-free rate in the market, the beta of the stock, and its market cap, and so on. And we put that calculation into the discounted cash flow formula in order to calculate the fair value of the stock. Now, in this bottom section, this is where most of the work will happen. And in this section, I'll point out the many items that you can change in order to update your fair value estimate and to make it more accurate. You'll see that any of these text boxes, any of these number boxes, or anything that you change, everything updates automatically. So anything that you change, you will see the fair value and the upside and downside, the terminal value, and all of these things that are calculated, you'll see all of that stuff update automatically. So the only thing that you have to do as a forecaster is project what you think will happen with revenue, net margins, and the ratio between free cash flow and net income. At the top of the forecasting section, you have two options on either side where you can add or remove historical data in order to improve the accuracy of the averages that are automatically calculated and sent out into the estimated cells. So you can add or remove historical years of data. You can also add or remove estimated years of data. So if you wanna make a 10 year projection or a 20 year projection or something larger than that, 
You can project as many years out into the future as you want, and these values will all be calculated for you automatically. And then you can just go through and tweak what you need to tweak. So this is where the majority of your work is going to happen. So what I like to do is look up for the first couple of years, the estimated revenue growth that analysts are projecting. So for a company like Apple that has 30 or 40 different analysts following it, there's gonna be a lot of projections about where they think revenue is going to go. So for example, if we change 2020 revenues to instead of an 8.05% 8 uh, 8 growth rate to just 1.3, and then we wanna see it pick back up in 2021 with maybe a 12.5% growth rate. You'll see that the upside and downside values are updating automatically. So as you go through and you project out what you think will happen with revenues and net margins and free cash flow and so on, everything will update automatically for you and you can use these estimates in order to improve the accuracy of your fair value prediction. You'll notice also that the discount factor is calculated automatically for you based on the required return, which is the same as your WAC estimate calculated in the upper right. So anytime you change something here in the upper right cell, this will update your weighted average cost of capital, and that will be projected out into your discount factors in order to properly discount the expected values of future cash flows to bring them back to present value. And finally, as you scroll down the page here, all of the items that are of relevance in the top portion where you're making all of your projections are charted out so that you can see the trend in these items over time. And you can look at these on an annual basis, quarterly basis, trailing 12 months, and using, as always, either bar or line charts. Hovering over them will give you the exact values and the dates and as usual, if you click on any one of these points, it will automatically open up the SEC filing that it came from. So here at the top, you have shares and market cap. Then you have the debt and interest charts. You've got earnings and taxes, revenue and revenue growth, net income and profit margins, and finally, free cash flow at the bottom. So all of these items that are in the cells up at the top, which are going into the fair value prediction, are also charted out on the bottom so that you can investigate those historically and improve your projections by looking at history in order to determine what they might do in the future. Now there's one last thing that you can switch here in the forecasting section, and that is to use net income growth in order to project free cash flow as opposed to using margin mode, which is what it uses by default. So by default, we use the historical average of net margins in order to project what free cash flow and net income might look like in the future. But you can also switch that to use the historical average of net income growth, which you'll see will significantly in some cases change your fair value estimate. In the case of Apple, it doesn't make too much of a difference. But in some companies, it will make a massive difference, and you'll want to choose one of those modes in order to make sure that your value prediction is accurate. So that's the first feature that I've just released last night. This is something I'm super excited about. It's something that people have been asking me about since very, very early on, and I just didn't have the ability to do it at the time. So I'm very excited to finally launch this, and I hope that people will find it useful. In the future, I also plan to add the ability to save these estimates, and this is probably going to be coming relatively soon. I want to give people the ability to actually save these projections and also potentially to export them into Excel so that if you have your own formulas and your own models that you've already got in Excel, then you can just take all of this data and export it out so you don't have to manually enter it into your Excel spreadsheets. Now, the second feature that I've just recently released is not as big, but it is a site-wide change. And if you look now on all of the charts across the entire site, you'll see two new items. If we put in a foreign ticker, for example here, Alibaba, you'll notice that there's a notification that pops up in the upper right, letting you know that it's a foreign ticker with a native currency 
of CNY. On all of the charts now for any foreign tickers, they are automatically by default converted to US dollars, which in the past you had to do yourself. So now you can switch back and forth between the native currency and US dollars. And this works on most of the charts on the site. Obviously it doesn't affect things like shares outstanding and items that are not measured in dollars or currency, but it does work on most of the charts in terms of being able to switch it back and forth. And anywhere it doesn't work, all values are now automatically converted to US dollars so that you don't have to worry about that anymore. And that includes in the valuation modeling, you'll notice that when you load up Alibaba or a foreign company, there's a notification that points out that you're looking at a foreign issuer. So all the monetary values are in US dollars. All right, so that's it folks. All I wanted to do with this video is just give a bit of an introduction to these new features. And I wanna to try to start doing this more often for some of the more advanced features on the site like red flag detection and the manipulation monitor and the insiders and institutions tab. These features are relatively advanced and it would be nice to have some documentation for those. So on top of adding documentation in the knowledge base, I'll also be making some videos to help you through using these features and being able to accurately predict stock prices and hopefully make better investment decisions. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.